Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Mike Preisner from Eyes Left Podcast. Also, Abby Martin from Empire Files. And you also have another podcast. Yeah, Tell me Media about Roots it. Radio on SoundCloud. Check it out. And iTunes. Media Roots Radio on yes. SoundCloud and iTunes. Check it out. And we're, we're going to talk about your show, Empire Files, right, which has been airing on Telesur lately. But guess what's happening with Telesur? Facebook restores Telesur's page with vague explanation of controversial block. So they took down their page twice already this year, and then they reinstated it. So let's, let's, let me tell you the story, and then we'll talk about it with them. The English language page of Latin American channel Telesur has reappeared on Facebook after two days. The social network offered a vague technical explanation for the move that sparked concerns of censorship worldwide. The team informs me that there was instability on the platform, which caused this problem, but now everything should be in order. Instability of the platform. Telesur quoted a support technician at Facebook as saying soon after the page was restored. Telesur's page had disappeared Monday evening as Facebook sent a form letter informing the network it might have violated the platform's terms of use without specifying which ones and how. This is an alarming development in the light of recent shutting down of pages that don't fit a mainstream narrative, Telesur said in a statement reacting to the deletion. Having been deleted on Facebook earlier this year, Telesur has been even more careful with its posts and broke absolutely none of Facebook's terms, the network's former director, Pablo Vivanco, told RT. So do you see that the, they're already self-censoring themselves anyway? Did you see how they're saying they're, that they've been even more careful with its posts. So that's self-censorship already. Telesur has broadcast worldwide in Spanish since 2005 and in English since 2014. Its Facebook page had almost 400,000 likes. That's like 10 times more likes than the Jimmy Dore Show page. That's pretty popular. The network is based in Caracas, Venezuela, and receives funding from the governments of Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, which I know how to say correctly because Peter Jennings said it that way, <laughs> Uruguay, and Bolivia. Last week, Facebook deleted the page of Venezuela Analysis, an outlet unrelated to Telesur that offered leftist commentary on Latin American affairs. Though Facebook later restated the page, Venezuelan analysis received no apology or explanation for its removal. Hmm, sounds like the government wants a regime change in Venezuela and the corporations doing their bidding to suppress information. In May, Facebook announced it was partnering with Atlantic Council, a NATO allied think tank. A NATO allied think tank. You know who's in that think tank? The dregs. People like Henry Kissinger, Mike Morell, former CIA director, Michael Chertoff, fa uh, former uh, Homeland Security uh, chief, who, who, who gave you that co color-coded scare the shit out of you thing for, about terrorism. Remember that? The threat level is orange. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was him. So these are the guys telling Facebook what to do. They're... It was partnering with Atlantic Council, a NATO allied think tank, to fight emerging threats. And do you want the people who engineered the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, the Libyan War, the Syrian War? Do you want those people doing the censoring of information in in America? I don't, but that's what's happening. Uh, emerging threats and disinf—they're fighting emerging threats and disinformation campaigns around the world. You know, when you tell the truth about a war, the government says that's disinformation. So when we tell the truth about the Syrian war and the gas attacks in Syria, when we tell you the truth about them, when we repeat the truth, we're then considered uh, telling, uh, dis fomenting discord and we're giving disinformation, even though we're not. The disinformation is coming from the government. Who always lies about the war? The governments. Where does disinformation about war come from? The governments. Yet they're the ones who are now going to take down other people's information in their social media because they're the one lying about war. No, the ones who are telling the truth are the ones who are being censored. The partnership has raised concerns about Facebook restricting content on the platform on the basis of political views. Of course that's what they're doing it for. And, and the reason they're doing it is because they have to protect you from ideas 
that you're not strong enough mentally to see through <laughs> or to handle. That's what this is. Uh, okay, so let's just stop there. Uh, so now, Abby, your show, uh, Empire Files, which is a fantastic show, uh, it aired was airing on uh, Telesur. Now tell me what's happened. Right. So, uh, you know, this is coming right after this. So this is part of a larger operation that we're seeing, a think tank that's stacked with not, on, not only defense contractors and U.S. military agencies, but oil corporations working hand in glove with tech companies to blanketly ban and censor content that it deems, you know, sowing discord or whatever the hell that means. And we saw actually a government committee last year beg these tech companies to preemptively do this um, before there was even a law. So we have Google backpaging state media already. We already saw censorship bans, age-sensitive content bans. You can't even go on Telesaur's Twitter without signing into some sort of restrictive, sensitive content thing. You can't even watch our videos from the ground in Venezuela without signing in on YouTube because of the age-sensitive thing. So on top of all of this, the sanctions that Trump has put into place with its regime change plan in Venezuela, as we know, Trump has really ramped up this regime change efforts. Um, on top of all of this going on, days after Maduro was attempted to be assassinated, which we found out allegedly was U U.S. backed and the Colombian Colombian uh, departing so the, president, Manuel Santos. So the democratically elected president of Venezuela, yes. Maduro, yes. there was a coup plot yes. against him. And who was doing it? So uh, the departing president, Santos. Santos was involved. He uh, basically told a room full of U.S. business leaders, Maduro's days are numbered. This was right before the assassination attempt. You have right wing um, pundits on Jaime Bailey, I think his name is, on TV saying that he was actually privy to a meeting in Miami talking about how they were going to assassinate him. Um, so this is there, there's so much out there about why, you know, obviously we shouldn't believe the U.S. government saying, no, we had nothing to do with this. We have John Bolton, Trump constantly saying, when are we going to invade and get the oil? So on top of all of this, you know, amazingly, even though Bush had already tried to foment a regime change plot there with the coup in 2002, where they kidnapped Hugo Chavez at the barrel of a gun and immediately tried to privatize the oil and shut down the Constitution for the people, they never actually implemented sanctions on Venezuela. So we didn't actually see these these kinds of sanctions until the Obama administration in 2015, when randomly Obama declared Venezuela a national security threat to us. I wonder if it could be because they have the largest oil reserves in the world. So that's when it started to get tough for Telesor to actually pay contract journalists not based in Caracas. Fast forward to the Democratic re-election of Maduro in May, where the sanctions were ramped up to a new unseen level, actually not seen in the region since Nicaragua back in the 80s, when we were waging a full-blown bloody war against Nicaragua. And of course, the sanctions, no, they're not just against corrupt government officials. They're against the most poor, working-class, vulnerable people in the country that are actually prohibiting food and medicine from coming in. So the sanctions do exactly what they're intended to do, make it harder for average poor people to live and get life-saving medication. But what it's doing actually around the world to contract journalists who are working with Telesaur is shut off the complete ability, 100%, to get paid. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of a perfect kind of happenstance uh, with this latest round of sanctions for Telesaur to become neutered in that sense. So unlike, you know, the FAR registration with RT, this big story is made about um, the Russian disinformation efforts and stuff. Telesaur has been a thorn in the side of the empire. That's why it was created. It was created in a joint effort by Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro to counter this corporate media propaganda that was dedicated to overthrowing their democratically elected governments or, you know, the governments for the people in those countries. So of course, the U.S. government hates Telesaur, and this is just a, a happy coincidence that Telesaur is unable to pay us. Shows like Tariq Ali just had to shut down as well. So that's where we're at today because of these debilitating sanctions. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's kind of evident that when we're talking about just the Internet censorship, right, that it was politically motivated because why was it Telesur and Venezuela analysis, you know, the two premier news sources for left analysis of what's going on in Venezuela? You know, fe Venezuela analysis isn't connected to the Venezuelan government at all, so they can't use the excuse, oh, it was state propaganda or something like that. They both at the same time, around the same time, got taken off without explanation, and that coincided with the assassination attempt on President Maduro, where they flew drones packed with C4 while he was giving a speech and tried to blow him up 
uh, while he was giving a speech. I mean, the fact that they coincided with a, a flat-out regime change operation uh, says a lot. And so, yeah, you know, we we broke the story on Aggressive Progressive with you, uh, and this is one of the other first times we're talking about it publicly, but we just, you know, were, for months, you know, when the sanctions got ramped up after the uh, landslide victory by Maduro, the day after is when the Trump administration, you know, had to punish them for for making that, that decision at the ballot box. But the sanctions got ramped up so much that, you know, funding's been completely cut off, more so than, than it has been in the past. And so, you know, the it's part of a larger operation. I mean, Telesaur has been uh, focused on as a target the entire time the U.S. has been trying to conduct regime change operations there. For example, when when we were in Venezuela reporting on the ground, um, there was, uh, you know, lynch mobs rallied up against us. We had to hide our identity, couldn't say that we were Telesaur. We'd probably be killed on the streets. In fact, right after we left... And we left because it was becoming too dangerous, because word got out that we were there. Uh, one of our colleagues got shot in the back, and her, our whole Telesaur team got ambushed with bombs and gunshots, and they had to you know, get rescued, but one got shot in the back in the middle of the attack. Um, there was a coup attempt, that, a, plot, a plot that was uncovered in 2015, and one of the main things that was part of the coup plot was blowing up the Telesaur headquarters in Caracas. Uh, and so you know, even the right wing threatens to shut it down all the time if they take power. So it's long been associated with the government, but it's because it's this source of information. It's a source of left information for not just people all throughout Latin America, but in the United States as well, about what's going on there. And so, uh, you know, we're not surprised that that the censorship is happening because it's, you know, one of the only sources for people in the U.S. to understand, oh, when Trump's saying we're going to go to war with them, we're going to sanction them even more, um, you know, what's the alternative side? It's coming from mainly from these two outlets, Telesaur and Venezuela Analysis. And really quickly, just an addition is that Henry Kissinger back in, you know, 1973, when the U.S., of course, overthrew Salvador Allende, another popular democratically elected leader, and installed a, a, the reign of terror with Pinochet. There was a campaign from the CIA to, quote, make their economy scream. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And he funded discord and so discord in that country for years um, and eventually, you know, overthrew that leader. And so they're doing the same thing in Venezuela, um, seizing the economy, making it impossible for Venezuela to recover, stand on its own two feet, not only with these debilitating sanctions, but also um, seizing its ability to borrow foreign loans. Um, and also these other countries that also fund Telesaur, we, we cannot get paid through them either because they've restricted the access to receive funds all throughout those other countries. So this is so. By the way, you uh, you are starting to be crowdfunded, correct? Correct. That's your show Empire yeah. Files. Yeah. So tell know, people how they can right because it's not you know like the Organization of American States is part of it. I mean, there's a whole campaign led by the United States and its uh, you know puppets in the region to to shut down Venezuela, like Cuba, all the countries. These are all the progressive Latin American countries that fund Telesur, um, like you know B Morales and Bolivia and, and so forth. Um, and so there's a statement on our website, the Empire Files TV. You can go to our Twitter at Empire Files, and there's a statement there uh, explaining in detail what's actually happening and the, the depth of the attacks and information about how to donate. And so we're, we've raised some money. We should we have a lot of stuff that we filmed that we haven't produced yet. For example, from Gaza and the Great March of Return, um, interviews with, uh, you know, Razan, the, the medic that was murdered, you know, interviews Your with the family, yeah. um, and stuff from Colombia when Abby was on the ground in Colombia and, like, the FARC peace zones where the Civil War ended. So there's a lot of stuff that we're working on trying to complete post-production on to get out. But as far after that, you know, it, it's, it's uncertain what the future of the show is. I mean, there's a reason why anti-imperialist journalists like Chris Hedges go to RT. There's a reason why, you know, you are doing what you do. And there's only so many places that you can really bring the message of anti-imperialism and challenging this kind of corporate tyranny that we see throughout the world. And Telesaur has been a, a wonderful medium to do that. We're super happy to be uh, collaborating with them. And it's just really shocking that this is happening. I never wanted to be at the place where I'm actually, you know, begging for donations to try to do our work. But I think that journalism has become so abysmal in this country that, um, Jimmy, we know how it is. I mean, 90% of everything that we see here and read is controlled by five corporations. It's completely subsidized by oil companies and defense contractors. And if you're challenging these narratives, you are going to be deemed a conspiracy theorist. Like you were, you were actually <laughs> lumped in with white supremacists and ISIS videos. And anyone who's been on the end of that, anyone who's been on the crosshairs um, of the mainstream media knows that they could be next. Um, and so we really need to band together and, and start funding each other and lifting up the journalists that we want to see do this work because we cannot rely or depend um, on anyone doing it for us. And especially, you know, mirroring your content, duplicating your content and not relying on these tech companies to host your material anymore because we bought into this system thinking that it could be this egalitarian thing that we would all have an equal playing field. And it's backfired on us, Jimmy. Um, so we need to be smarter 
moving forward and and you know and basically just support the journalists that we want to see it's really unfortunate that we're here and i appreciate all the support so far and thank you for letting us come on and talk about this so you have a patreon page how do you how are you doing yeah so we have gofundme um keep empire files going on there and we have a patreon for people who want to become monthly subscribers as well Okay, and and where do people go? Where should they go? So I think it's just Patreon backslash Empire Files. We also have a Bitcoin on there. Um, oh, you can okay, check great. out MediaRoots.org and, and check out the top article. There's a Bitcoin. But if you find on us there. on social, any of our social yeah. media, that's the top thing that's pinned now is that the statement where we go into detail with all the information. To okay. Have support. All right. Well, everybody should do that. I, there's a little bit more I wanted to go over. This is from Rolling Stone. This is from Matt Taibbi. He wrote this. More significantly, did you know this? Google's former head of free expression issues in Asia, Lokman C. Su or C, blasted the tech giant's plan to develop a search engine that would help the Chinese government censor content. So Google, who used to have a motto of "Do no evil," is now doing fascist evilness. So, although I got in trouble for saying China was fascist, they're. Uh, uh, they're certainly uh, controlled capitalism. That certainly is communist. I mean, they're not communist, but they're um, they're one state, they're one party rule. What would you call? I would I would say this is fascism. What would what would you say that that well, is? you can uh, still be executed if you're a CEO who screws over all your workers. So there's a, it's, I wouldn't say it's a it's a capitalist country for for a few reasons. But. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, they 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 do a certain like a, a government controlled mm -hmm. form of capitalism, which is what socialism really is anyway. And so you have planning committees, and they decide what kind of cap what they should do. So, but anyway, I'm not the one get caught up in. Um, terms but that's horrible so that's that's google doing the thing everyone was afraid would happen is that here is the corporation going hey uh dictatorial totalitarian government we'll help you censor we'll keep uh information about liberty and democracy and any other thing that you want to keep away from your citizens we'll help censor it so when they go into a search engine and they type in hey the way the chinese government is screwing us it won't come up nothing will come up they will we'll help you with that. That's what Google's doing. That's who they are. They run YouTube. So there's a little more to this article. It says now, so Matt Taibbi talks about how there used to be a way to deal with all this stuff. If you thought there was something wrong with someone's content, you went to court. And he said, but now that line is gone. Depending on the platform, one can be banned for glorifying violence. Isn't that every Hollywood movie ever? Isn't every movie glorify violence? Every every Bruce Willis movie, every, uh, who's the, who's the guy who doesn't like the, uh, Matt, Mel, Mel Gibson, every Mel Gibson mm -hmm. movie, mm -hmm. is every Rambo movie, every Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're all, right? But I thought the Fast and Furious. What about Brian, Brian Williams? And he said the beauty of our weapons. What about Brian <laughs> Williams? <laughs> Leonard we are Cohen. guided by the beauty no. of our weapons. No, that's and not when glorifying he violence. No. I just remember that Nick Swartzen joke where he said, I saw the Fast and Furious and I was furious at how <laughs> fast they were going. <laughs> <laughs> it was too fast. It was definitely too fast. So glorifying violence, sowing division, which mm. is a little different than sowing discord. I like discord better. Uh, sowing division hateful conduct, all this stuff is completely vague, nobody knows what it is, or even low quality. So they low can quality. ban your stuff because <laughs> your news is low quality. <laughs> so that means if you catch a cop abusing someone on a cell phone, that's low quality. So they don't have to show that. Hey, if you get... So that's another way they can get rid of... So if you catch a protest and you're out of... They can just say it's low quality. Uh, with the terms defined by... So again, I'll read it to you without stopping. Now the line is gone. Depending on the platform, one can be banned for glorifying violence, sowing division, hateful conduct, or even low quality with those terms defined by nameless, unaccountable executives working with God knows whom. Well, I like actually sowing division and hateful. I like hateful conduct, and I especially like low quality <laughs> stuff that glorifies violence. So, uh, I mean... Why, first of all, why can't you hate shit? I hate, I hate police culture in America. Why can't I hate that? Why can't I hate fascism? Why can't I hate the KKK? Why can't I hate shit? What is wrong with hating shit? Uh, and sowing division. I, that, 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 that's what politics is. Politics is nothing but sowing division. Uh, and advertising, by the way. That's what advertising is. Uh, you don't want to be like that guy. 
You don't want to be like the smelly guy. We use our deodorant. Uh, and glorifying violence, which is every movie and every tweet by the Defense Department, by the way. So, but they'll never take the Defense Department's Twitter handle down, right? They'll yeah, even anything. after they said we we almost obliterated North Korea, what? Remember when they bragged about that? The DOD posted mm-hmm. some bizarre glorification yes. of literally how they, exterminating how they, all the all the bombs they dropped on North people. Korea. Yeah. And yeah, I mean Fox News, CNN. I mean, you know, is Fox News less dangerous than Alex Jones? Is he less dangerous than the defense contractors being, you know, paraded around CNN to sell the next military incursion that's going to cost another one million innocent lives? I just don't see the, you know, what are we talking about here? And also this, this entire thing about Google that everyone's making a huge stink about. Why are they not pointing at the fact that Google just did this in America? That they just uh, deplatformed and backpaged all left and state media where you have mm. truth dig counterpunch black agenda report plummeting in views your yes they're, they're, they're yeah. definitely throttling independent news on YouTube there's no doubt about it they do things like they um, they'll unsubscribe our subscribers they mm. don't do that to the big channels right so that that's another big scandal that Matt Taibbi talked about that all this all these algorithms are done in secret. They don't even tell you what the algorithm is. So that's all that should be a scandal and it's not. So they're now pushing CNN and MSNBC and places like that on YouTube and they're not pushing shows like this and in fact they're unsubscribing our and that's that's a fact that that's happening and it, and uh, you know nobody goes to YouTube to watch CNN or to watch MSNBC. Yet you see their videos now because their videos used to always get 3 4000 views or sometimes hundreds. Now they get a million views on their videos. Why? Because when you log into YouTube, it has one of their videos play automatically. Or in the next video, it plays automatically. That's mm-hmm. why they're getting all those views. It's not because people are going there to watch them. And so uh, I'm caught up in it. You're caught up with it. Everybody help support uh, Abby Martin. I, you know, I actually prefer crowdfunding. I prefer mm-hmm. to be like this. And my audience supports me, so I'm not beholden to anybody, so I can always say tell the truth. And that's a good feeling. And there's a lot of places that are trying to go back to an advertising model. I don't want to ever go back to that. Mm-hmm. I like it like this. I, don't, I like not having to rely on anybody except the people who want to hear the truth. Yeah, it's beautiful to be accountable to the people who are kind of democratizing your your enterprise. Um, but I think I was just thinking about this and how funny is it that during the Arab Spring, Twitter and Facebook were hel- heralded as yeah. these tools for <laughs> the revolution. Tool for revolution. Right. Huh, how weird. <laughs> now ah, they're being first used Twitter revolution, to, the stimmy, first <laughs> to yeah. stimmy any sort of discord or division uh, here so, and elsewhere. How funny. So when, the twi- so when the CIA can use Twitter to foment a revolution and in a country they want regime change, mm. it's the best thing right. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you are, you're probably not. It only takes a second to check. And then you have to ring that bell so they send you a notification when we drop a new video. Otherwise, they won't tell you when we drop new videos. And if you like our show, please help support it. Become a patron. We give you hours of bonus material every week. And we give a live stream. We do a live stream every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time when you could ask us questions and we answer them back. Thanks for your support. Bye.